James 1 is no doubt one of the most beautiful chapters when every single verse or section deserves our attention. But for today, we will thrive with five on James 1, 1 through 5. Let's read. This letter is from James, a slave of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am writing to the 12 tribes, Jewish believers scattered abroad, greetings. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. If you need wisdom, ask your generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. As a family, choose your foundational truth that you would apply to these verses. I would choose, I can trust God no matter what. Let's look at the first verse. This letter is from James, a slave of God and of Lord Jesus Christ. I am writing to the 12 tribes, Jewish believers scattered abroad, greetings. The book was written by James, but what you might not know is that James is the half brother of Jesus. You see, this James grew up knowing Jesus as a brother, but then he came to know Jesus as his savior. That word slave in this verse means belongs to, working under for someone. In this verse, that someone is for God. Who are the 12 tribes? Well, kids, think about the 10 towns in this area. The Christ followers who live among these towns would essentially be considered the tribe of each town. Roselle tribe, Hanover Park tribe, Itasca tribe. I know, kind of silly to think it that way. Have you ever heard the phrase brother in Christ or sister in Christ? Well, check this verse out. Verse two addresses the tribes in this way. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider an opportunity for great joy. To me, the key word in these verses, the key words in these verses is when and joy. Uh, With your pen or your highlighter, go ahead and underline those two words. Trials will come our way. Sickness, accidents, losing a game, families not getting along. It's not if trials will come our way, it's when trials will come our way. God wants us to be trained and prepared for future trials. The second part of that verse says, consider it an opportunity for great joy. You know, joy is this quiet confidence that we have when ultimately everything is going to be all right. Why should we choose joy when a huge trial or problem comes our way? Well, for that answer, let's keep reading. Verse three, for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Have you ever made pasta? Uh, When we buy pasta, it, it comes like this. It's, it's uncooked, it's, it's hard. Well, for us to use pasta, it must go through a boiling process and also a straining process. You need to heat it up and then you need to separate it from the water. It's a process that must happen every single time. Think about it. When we eat pasta, we want it to be soft with the sauce that soaks into every single noodle. Uh, When we eat anything less, it's hard and super hard to enjoy. Well, kind of like this cook soft noodle, the process it needed to go through to be delicious, God brings us through a similar process when we face trials. Let's read verse four. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Have you ever trained your mind or body for something? Parents, maybe a marathon or a certificate certification. Kids, maybe you train for riding your bike without training wheels or working on a Lego masterpiece over a series of days. Well, as you trained for those things, I bet you felt stronger or smarter and more confident. 
you know, the NIV translation uses the words mature and complete, mature meaning full grown. Well, choosing to believe that each trial we face is perfecting us, it's strengthening us to have the endurance we need for all future trials. Because remember, James says when. Let's read verse five. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. Instead of God saying, I will tell you, he, a generous God, says, ask, and I will give you wisdom. Well, what is wisdom? Wisdom is applying truth from the Bible. And how do we get this wisdom? Well, we ask through prayer. And as God gives us wisdom, it unleashes the fruit of the Spirit, joy in our life. And there you go, back to verse 2. Consider it an opportunity for pure joy because when we go through trials and we turn to prayer and scripture, God will give us the wisdom which unleashes joy in our lives. We'll see you next time.